Okay, I'm uh, just walking around my neighborhood. I'll explain why I'm out in this ungodly heat. And uh, look at this gorgeous, I'm not sure what it is, Japanese garden, where I'm gonna make my Friday Reads video. What the hell is this? This is about, I don't know, I came a circuitous route, but it's maybe 10 minutes or less walk from my house, look at that. But there's a sign here. No, only in the Japanese. Maybe it's a, it's a shrine or temple. There's a bench there. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a temple. So, I'm still gonna film after I show you a bit, because that's a shady bench. We show Kosakai area map. So I don't know who Risho, Risho Kosei Kai was, but he was born here. This is beautiful. Even if I, they won't let me film here, I'm happy to show. Oh, here's some. Love to find a little bench right back here. Boy, listen, listen to that nature. <laughs> Whoa, that was right in my ear. I don't, scared me. I don't know what it was. I'm not sure I'm supposed to be back here. <laughs> Let's. Well, that one bench that was in the shade looks less in the shade than it did five minutes ago, so I'm not sure I'm going to film here after all, but it's beautiful. <sighs> Which means I should probably just go home, because I've been walking for 15 minutes in this heat. Oh, um, let's see what this is. Let's see what this is. すいません。じゃ、僕からない。はい。
okay, well, we'll try it. But I, I asked where a close nearby park was, so I don't know what nearby means to her. We'll soon find out. Hello, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Well, I guess this might have been the park that the lady pointed me towards, but it wasn't on the main street, but I stumbled upon it. And at first I was ready to uh, go postal because there are several benches, but every bench that's in the shade is currently occupied at uh, 20 to 9 in the morning. <laughs> Except then I found this r circular long bench and uh, there is a lady sitting near me and she's listening to something in English. Um, but she's far enough away that I, I hope I'm not bothering her and don't really care because this is a shady spot. Uh, what the hell am I doing? Well, I was going to go to the nearest park, the one that I, uh, one that I pre-filmed. You know, I, I took you on a sound test, sound check a couple weeks ago. And the one shady bench, there was a man standing beside it with his briefcase on the bench and he was smoking. There was no way I was going to sit down beside him, not because of the smoke, but just self-conscious. So then I just started wandering and wandering and found that temple, which was gorgeous. And now here I am. So I don't know, how, I actually don't know how far I am from my apartment now, because I came the long way around, but I'll, I've got uh, Google Maps GPS. Anyway, my Friday week, even though I maybe have a lot to say, I'm not at my most articulate. <laughs> my most articulate usually leaves something to be desired. I'm hungover today, although I think this early morning walk maybe cured me, so I actually feel better than I did uh, when I left the house. I have finished, I, I believe, and again, my, my brain's fried, but I believe I've finished one, only one novel this week, but there's many weeks go by where I don't finish any. But Ange and I finished Grand Hotel by Vicky Baum, maybe last, last weekend. Wonderful, wonderful novel. It's kind of, it's just such a good story. So I can tell you about the story. I mean, it's a, apparently this was the first in the hotel novel genre, uh, published 1929, I think. Yep, made into a movie a couple years later and uh, bestseller in every language you can imagine since then. Although I don't think it's people, it's as widely read these days, but in its time, it was a huge bestseller. Many hotel novels have been written since. This is actually the third hotel novel I've read this year, which is interesting, because I don't think I'd ever read one before that. So you're seeing people in flux, you know, that feeling when you're traveling and you have a chance at reinvention or imagining yourself in a different world and all of the, that aspect of being in a hotel come into play. People taking a vacation from their humdrum lives and the characters are really richly drawn there's humor and pathos the writing or translation is lovely it was translated by Basil Crichton and then with revisions by Margot Betauer Dembo uh, Basil Crichton has translated Herman Hess among others and he died in 1989, because I how would he feel about having his translation revised, but it was probably done after his death. Anyway, the, the writing is gorgeous. Most translations are crap, if you ask me, They're because you know publishers uh, can't afford to hire a really good translator. But this, was, this is a beautiful translation. I mean, I don't know how good of a translation it is, but it's beautiful to read in English. And I knocked one star off because I thought the uh, ending was overly melodramatic whereas the plot had been very dramatic up to that, but it was a real melodramatic turn that I thought was unnecessary, but didn't like it. So one star off, but still solid four star read. No bales. And I have started two novels this week. I haven't quite finished the Michelle de Kretzer. Britta has finished, and I'm less than 100 pages from finishing, but it's not a book that I can read in big chunks at one time, so I hope to finish it this weekend. The complete works of Muriel Spark Buddy Reed continues with her second novel, Robinson. So far it's just Adam and Doris and I of the larger group that read The Comforters and I'm not really enjoying it that much. But at this 
I think I'm about almost halfway through, and at about the halfway mark with the comforters, I wasn't enjoying it very much, and by the end, I almost loved it. So, it's not boring. I'm not hating it. I'm not hate reading it, but it's heavily allegorical, and I don't really like that. And Robinson Crusoe narratives, the title, hence the title, don't really interest me, although there is a lot of there are enough people on the island that there's social dynamics, so no, it's interesting, but uh, kind of silly and kind of not my kind of thing. But the best part is, I almost just want to put the novel down and just let Adam riff on Voxer to us and tell us what it means. Not what it means, but I mean, I kind of hate Adam because <laughs> you can't edit yourself on Voxer, and he's as polished and articulate uh, on Voxer with no edits as... Uh, as he is on uh, booktube. Hate that. But it's fun. The buddy read is wonderful. And I also started this, and this is what I am most excited about. The Sea Change of Angela Lewis by Cynthia Proper Seton. I've talked about her a couple times. You're, I'm not going to shut up about her now that I'm almost f about 40% of the way through. This could end up being one of my top reads of the year. It's that good. It's not a perfect novel, but... I am so excited that there are no ratings or reviews of this on Goodreads, but it's still in print. That just flummoxes me, and it's so good that I am, and I think Anne is going to join me because we're both loving it so far, become evangelists for Cynthia Proper Seton. I think this is her debut, but her, her Wikipedia page is a little confused. It mentions this in the text as her debut, but then the bibliography, there's one that was published earlier than this. But this was published in 1971. But this is a uh, quietly, powerfully feminist novel from 1971 about several generations of women from before World War II up until 1971. So we're now on the third generation, well, with hints of the fourth, of women who are struggling in their own way with their, what was the Betty Friedan phrase, with their lives of quiet desperation. It's beautifully written, not perfectly written, but who cares about perfect? It is... <laughs> I, can't, I haven't been grabbed hold of by a novel like this. I can't remember the last time. It's just compulsively readable, really literary. The characters just jump off the page. All my favorite sayings when I get excited about a work of fiction, but this... You know, there's still time for it to go south. There's you know, like things that I don't like about it. I'll do a full review and probably an epigraph tag because I'm going to be talking about Cynthia Proper Seton for the foreseeable future. Stay tuned. Just gorgeous. In terms of uh, what's coming up, I think only one next week. But again, I didn't plan very much for this buddy read. But I believe I have one more buddy read starting in July. And I know I have one more, but I think it's only one more. And that's with Britta Bowler. We are buddy reading Pond by Claire Louise Bennett. And I, I have the gorgeous hardcover edition, so I will add a little video snippet, because I don't want to just show you the, th the, the graphic, the JPEG. I want to show you the book. There we go. Isn't that a beauty? Home. This is a gorgeous hardcover, and... I've sampled one page. Can you guess which page? Love the writing. Really stoked to start it with Britta. I believe on Sunday, but anyway, next week. All right, uh, one last thing. I, when I was filming outside, because of the uh, near heat stroke I was suffering, I forgot to mention this, The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. I'm going to be starting a buddy read on this with Heidi of My Reading Life, I believe her channel is called. I featured this in my Try a Chapter tag last week, and she left an enthusiastic comment and I said well why don't we buddy read it and cram it in at the end of July so it's gonna be a three-day buddy read starting on Friday can't wait looking forward to that and then I my plan is to finish up everything that I've been reading not clowning not counting those two tomes the Polish novel the doll and the Taiwanese novel the stolen bicycle <sighs> have I bailed on them without acknowledging that fact. I think what I'm going to do the likelihood is I won't pick them back up until I get back from Canada in mid-August but at that time 
I think what I'll do is I'll do do a vlog and I'll read a, one hour on more on each of them and then decide am I going to continue and just read it read these on a regular basis until I'm finished or am I going to put them aside and try them again when I have more of a clean slate because it's a little bit ridiculous I keep going back and forth on whether it's okay to put a book aside for so long but I haven't cracked them in two months or something I don't know so besides those I'm hoping to finish up everything else that I'm reading by the end of the month and booktubeathon so by, by, by July 30th, and then book Tubathon for that week, which is also insane since I'm getting ready to go home and get married. Life is beautiful. I guess I'll finish because I haven't talked for too long. Maybe now's the time to, it's not really an announcement, but just maybe the beginning of a conversation I might have with some of you. But I've kind of made up, my, I've basically made up my mind that I'm not going to follow book prizes anymore other than to enjoy other booktubers, especially Eric Carl Anderson's enthusiasm for them, because I find it really infectious, but I'm not going to read books because they're on book prize lists anymore. I am almost always disappointed. But I think part of the disappointment comes from all the hype, and I, I'm hearing quite a bit of appreciation for the fact that I'm talking about books on my channel that lots, that most booktubers aren't talking about Cynthia Proper Seton would be the most germane example but you know so I don't want to talk about books on that are on prize lists uh, maybe Peg will send me some page 112s and I'll do that but no I don't want to do reaction videos I want to watch them but I don't want to read anything that's on the booker list this year well here here's my criteria a booker and the women's prize like they're suck as far as I'm concerned I haven't liked one book that they've that's won those prizes in years. So they've nominated some good books, but they haven't given the prize to books that were very good. I didn't think this year was terrible, Women's Prize. Um, and that's my opinion, right? Uh, most of you will disagree, and you can, <laughs> you can disagree with me in the comments. That's fine. But in terms of the kind of books that I like, aren't the kind of books that get prizes. So why do I read the prize lists? I'm not, I'm not going to do it unless I have already found out about the book and was interested in it. So in terms of books that are being talked about that are, might be on the booker, the Donal Ryan, if I'm pronouncing Donald, Donald Ryan, his new book, I've never read anything by him, so I, I might choose to read that. Whether or it's on the prize list or not, I want to read it. So if I develop my own, like I, I just want to listen to myself, I know what kind of books I like. Prize lists kind of pull me out of my own grounded feeling and that sounds like a Sean book so yeah that's why I'm going to uh, de-emphasize prize lists you're not going to hear me talking about prizes very much I may change my mind that's my prerogative but I'm just going to enjoy like I still enjoy watching Eric or Jennifer or whoever uh, talk about the prize lists but I'm not going to join in I'm going to put comments on their channels, but I'm not going to devote space on my channel because it waylays me from finding and enjoying the kind of books that really deeply appeal to me. Like this. This was on No Prizes. One of her books was nominated for a National Book Award. I'm dying to know if any of you have ever heard of Cynthia Proper Seton. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, dive into backlist on this channel and in my reading life for the foreseeable future. Part of the inspiration for that, oh, they're setting up some, oh, there must be a summer festival. They're setting up, I'll film it for a minute as I walk out. But I just saw some drums, so taiko drumming. Have you ever seen taiko drumming? When at the very end of the taiko drumming show, the really muscular, hot, young drummer or drummers rip their shirts off and then beat on the drums for five minutes and the sweat's pouring down. It's it's my favorite thing about Japan. <laughs> so, anyway, I digress. Uh, what are you up to, reading-wise or otherwise? Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. So here's the semicircle bench where I just filmed. I don't know what these stones are about. That's where I was. I don't know how far it is from my house, but I may come back here. So 
good filming location. And uh, here's another sandy park. And they're setting up, see the drums? I don't know if they're taiko drums. I don't know if there's different kinds of drums other than taiko, but they're, I think that's a taiko drum. So they're setting up. Oh, and now the benches over there that were occupied, or not occupied, 